So can you really charge an EV with just a standard 120 volt outlet? The short answer is yes, but that does come with some caveats. So I recently had the opportunity to live with a 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 5 and try it out for myself with the standard charger that comes with the vehicle. Now I wanna share exactly how my experience went over the week that I had with the vehicle, what you should expect going into charging with maybe a 120 volt outlet, and some of the limitations in terms of charge time and charge range that you can drive on a daily basis using solely 120 volt charging. Now I did film some clips with the vehicle itself, but it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted to. So I will insert some of the clips that I filmed prior with my time with the vehicle. And I'll kind of interject here and there, explain the situation, the charging for that day, and kind of the percentage I used and everything like that. So uh, let's go ahead and get into day one and uh, see how the week progressed. So starting with day one, I got the vehicle with 94% state of charge and ended the day with 79%. Now to keep the test consistent throughout my week with the vehicle, I did set the max AC charge rate or charge level to 80%. Uh, that's typically where owners will keep their vehicle on a daily basis. Now, obviously if you go on a road trip or something like that, you'll increase it to 100%, uh, but 80% is a good threshold to use for this test. And I also set the charger that comes with the vehicle itself to 10 amps, as it does come preset at six amps. So I increased that to 10 amps, and then later in the week, I increased it to the maximum 12 amps, uh, just to see what the charge time differences were. Now, given that I did end the night at 79%, I really didn't need to charge up to 80, but I did anyway, because it kind of kept the test consistent and uh, gave me that extra 1% for the following day. Good morning on day number two of the full charge or up to about 80%, like I said last night. Um, it turns out it got down to about 28, 29 degrees, enough for a heavy thick frost. You can see the windows are just defrosting now. Same with the other side, and the windshield was actually fully frosted over. I remote side the car via the key fob for maybe five minutes max. It's already nice and toasty warm in here. Windshield was defrosted, so I ran the wipers, cleared the windshield without a problem, and we we're down to 78% starting state of charge. So it dropped maybe one and a half percent overnight or so. So let's go ahead and head off to work and see, I guess, what it gets down to as the day progresses. So starting out with day number two, I ended up with 78% state of charge, likely due to the fact that overnight it dropped down to about 28 degrees ambient temperature. So this impacted the kind of range that the battery had and the state of charge it had. Uh, during the day, it warmed up though to in the upper 40 degree range, which was very nice. And it likely added uh, maybe about a percent or so to the state of charge during the battery uh, during that day itself. Uh, but when I finished the day out, I came home with 66% state of charge. Uh, now there was a customer who came in during that day that kind of test drove the vehicle, added a few more miles in addition to my normal commute. Uh, so this was a little bit higher of a mileage count for the day uh, versus what I normally drive, which is about 16 to 18 miles. Uh, so I ended the day with a few more miles, but this gave me an opportunity to kind of see just how much range I could gain uh, using 10 amp charging overnight. So I ended up plugging in at right around 521 p.m. at 10 amps, like I said, and it didn't quite make it to 80% overnight, uh, but it did make it just shy at 79%. But this was a good baseline for later in the week uh, where I actually ended up with the same state of charge, except I charged at 12 amps. Good morning on day three. And just as I expected, we were cutting it extremely close to get to 80%. So starting out with day number three, I started with 79% state of charge. And as you guys saw, it just had 15 minutes left away from a full or 80% charge where I have the threshold set. So this was pretty close, a good baseline actually to kind of go off and maximize uh, how much time it takes on 10 amp charging. But anyways, this was the day I actually drove the most with the vehicle itself, right around 50 miles, which is quite a bit more than I normally would drive in a vehicle on a daily basis. Uh, so out of all the days, this was definitely the day that I finished with the lowest state of charge, uh, just over 62%. So I ended up plugging in a little bit later as well, right around 6.15 p.m. And this time I changed the charger to 12 amps, which gave me a small boost in the amount of charge going into the battery. And of course, shortens the time that it takes to charge the vehicle up to your set threshold. And in this case, once again, 80%. Uh, so there was a noticeable difference in the charge rate. Uh, however, it didn't quite make it to 80%. Once again, I ended up right at 78%. So this was also a good test uh, because it kind of showed the limitations of how much range you can expect using the OE 
OEM Hyundai charger and of course 120 volt charging overnight. So the morning of day four rolls around and I started this time again with 78% state of charge. It said it had about an hour and 15 minutes left remaining to get up to 80%. Uh, so as you guys can tell, that's about the hour difference that I kind of took to plug it in at night. That hour later was basically uh, shown on the morning that I had about an hour left. So had I plugged it in at the regular time at 12 amps, it would have been very close to reaching the 80% threshold that I have set. So that was kind of interesting to see itself. And on this day, I actually drove very close to my normal mileage and ended up with a similar state of charge as the first full day I had with the vehicle, which was 66% state of charge at the end of the day. Drove about 26 miles or so. And again, plugged in about 5.51 p.m. this night, again at 12 amps, and was easily able to reach 80% by the morning, uh, just over 11 hours and 40 minutes of total charge time. Now finally wrapping up with day five, this time I started with 79% state of charge just due to the colder temps on the night prior uh, as it did easily reach the 80% threshold and stop charging hours before I was ready to unplug and leave in the morning. Uh, this was my final day with the vehicle so I didn't have a full time or full day with it. However, I did actually drive a little bit more than I normally would have just because I did a little extra filming, uh, kind of my final review in-car video with it. So I did end up driving quite a bit on this final day but did not have to plug it in that night uh, to charge it back up for another day. So that's how the week went in a nutshell, but let's go ahead and take a closer look at all the data, kind of look at the timelines and the percentages in a little bit more detail. So when you look at charge times or charge rates on 120 volt charging, at 12 amps, you're generally gonna be charging about 1.6 to 1.7% of the battery pack, depending on the size of the pack itself. Uh, but in this case, about 1.6 to 1.7. And with 120 volt charging, you don't see the most charge efficiency, which means not all the energy is making it into the battery pack itself. Now all cars while charging will kind of have some draw uh, just for the electrical components that control the charging and the speeds itself. Uh, so generally with 120 volt charging, you're gonna see 70 to 80% efficiency, which means that is the amount of power actually making it into the battery pack itself. Now with the Ionic 5 I had in my personal experience, I seem to average about 1.1 to 1.2% charge rate per hour at 12 amps with the real world calculations I managed to occur. And at 10 amps, I seem to average about 0.9% an hour in actual charge rate seen going into the battery itself based on the calculations earlier in this video. So now you might be asking why 120 volt charging is less efficient than 240 volt charging, uh, which is closer to about 90% depending on the vehicle itself and how much draw is going in and everything like that. But I believe this is due to the fact that the car will always be drawing a certain amount of power to control the modules and electronics, uh, controlling the charging flow going into the vehicle itself. So there's always some draw coming from the vehicle itself. Not all the energy is making it directly into the battery pack. So say the car is drawing about 400 watts or something. I don't know exactly the number that most vehicles or EVs draw uh, when they're charging themselves, but say it's 400 watts. Now, if you're only putting in 1.3 kilowatts or 1300 watts from a 120 volt outlet, you're losing 400 of those watts to the vehicle itself. So essentially you're ending up putting about 900 watts of that energy or 71% into the battery itself. Uh, obviously there's heat transfer losses and stuff like that, but that's really not a huge issue on 120 volt charging uh, where it is on DC fast chargers. So 71% could only be making it into the battery. Now when you take a look at 240 volt charging, if you're putting 7.2 kilowatts into the vehicle itself, it's taking the same 400 watts to control the modules, charging structure, stuff like that, which means you end up putting 6.8 kilowatts or 6,800 watts, which is 94% of the available power going in directly to the battery pack. So that is kind of where the efficiency standpoint comes from. And uh, that's the research I found on the internet where people say 120 volt is the least efficient charging in terms of what's going into the battery. And 240 volt is typically uh, much more efficient. So now you may be wondering how much of a percentage was I able to return back into the battery pack using just 120 volt overnight? Well, I was able to charge between 12 and 14 hours each night, and that's generally the same for each day of the week as to what I have available. Now the weekends might vary a little bit. You might actually have more time available to charge on the weekends, uh, but generally I was able to get about 14 to 16% of the charge back into the Ionic 5 using the largest 12 amp capacity on the stock charger. 
Now there are opportunities to use a 16 amp 120 volt outlet if you have a dedicated 20 amp circuit in your home, have the correct wiring and stuff like that. Now if you were to use a 16 amp charge cable and had the dedicated circuit, you could likely see somewhere between 18 to 20% going back into the battery pack. Now this will depend on the EV's battery pack size, but generally with the Ionic 5, you could see upwards of 20% going back in if you were able to max out the 120 volt charging at 16 amps. So to wrap up this video, can you charge on just 120 volt power overnight? And the answer is yes. However, this will vary depending on two main factors, the size of the battery pack your EV has and how much you drive on a daily basis. And I guess another small variable goes into it and that's how efficient the driving you're doing is. If you're getting about 2.7 to 3 kilowatt hours, this is generally fairly efficient for EVs, although you can get upwards of four in certain models uh, out there. So generally between three and four miles per kilowatt hour is pretty good. And you should be able to recoup a lot of that energy using only 120 volt charging. Now, even if you do end up driving a little bit more than you're able to recover overnight on that power, you still have a buffer because obviously most EVs out there have upwards of, you know, 250 to 300 miles of uh, EPA estimated range. So even if you go outside of the energy you're able to recoup the next night, you still have enough charge to kind of cover your commute and any driving you need to do on the next day, unless it goes outside of the estimated range that the vehicle currently has at your current state of charge. So it's easiest to explain this in a graphic where it kind of shows the start and state of charge and how much energy you recovered that night. So I'll go ahead and create one and put it up on the screen so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, but even if you don't recoup all of your energy, you should be good enough for the next day's commute, assuming you aren't going on a road trip or anything like that. So this is gonna be the first video in a two-part series. In the next one, I'm gonna cover the associated costs that come with charging an EV at home and kind of what to expect when comparing it to a personal gas car and how much more efficient an EV is over certain combustion engine cars, uh, not only hybrids, but also my personal vehicle itself. Uh, so I'm gonna calculate this in the next video. So if you're interested in seeing what the associated costs are charging an EV at home versus kind of filling up your gas tank at the gas station, make sure to check that one out because there's definitely some interesting information and calculations done in that video. Now let me know in the comments if you guys are an EV owner that who primarily charges on a 120 volt outlet, whether you're successful, not successful, or you do it only part time, I'd definitely be interested in hearing your experiences using only 120 volt power because a lot of people out there don't think this is actually enough, but it goes to show that if you have a small enough commute, it actually is plenty sufficient and uh, you don't necessarily have to install a level two charger inside of your garage or wherever you charge at. So let me know that information down in the comments. So hopefully you got something helpful out of this and it helped you understand that 120 volt charging is actually possible depending on the EV you drive, how efficient you are, and of course the overall mileage you drive on a daily basis. Uh, but I appreciate everybody supporting the channel and as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.